what I'm interested in is the freedom in the process. I'm interested in raw, real and spontaneous mind making. Hi, I'm Gitta Backhausen. I'm an abstract artist living in Derangong on the south coast of New South Wales. Welcome to my studio. My studio is a place where all the magic happens. So it's a very special and unique place for me. I can work in a lot of mess, so um, sometimes I think people are a little bit shocked when they enter and they go, how can you work in this? But, but I can because I'm so immersed in the creative process when I create that it doesn't matter what's around me. I do have different sections for different things that I do, um, although that might not be clear to you, but I'm going to point it out. This is where I sit and do um, some writing and I reflect on things. I might do colour studies, drawings. It's really a place for play and contemplation. I love this little area because it's full of light and yeah, I just enjoy sitting here. So this is my printmaking area. Uh, or that's my print press, the area is the whole studio. So when I do printmaking, I roll this out and pretty much take over the whole studio. There'll be papers and inks and pencils and everything everywhere. So this area is a bit messy at the moment because I've been playing with um, inks and sticks and mark making with uh, branches and leaves and so on. And then we move into my painting area. I spend a lot of time in front of this wall, both painting and contemplating. I, um, I've never been one to work on an easel. I just find that quite restrictive. So I either work on um, if the artwork leaning up against the wall, or I hang it on the wall, or as you'll see, I also often create on the floor of my studio. I really need to have that freedom of movement and freedom to express in my work and I love that I can do that with the, with the space I have available and um, it's just important for me in order to keep my process spontaneous and alive and free so that's, that's why I do that. This is the exciting part of one of them so I've just taking it off the floor and I'm going to have a look at what's happening here and then once I've decided whether to do a few more marks or sit back for a little bit longer and then I can connect with it in a different way. So now I'm just going to have a bit of a look at it and just sort of sit with it for a little bit to see what it tells me. Quite liking what's happening up here and the rest is a bit of a mess at this point, but it doesn't really matter because it's just one layer, uh, part of many. So at this stage, I'll just take a little bit of time out to just sit and have a look at it and then continue from there. It's a little bit like having a conversation with the painting, so I just need to sit back and listen for a bit and it will tell me what the next step is. Not in words, obviously, but it's more like an intuitive guidance. So I was born in Denmark and I grew up there. And that's where my artistic career started. I did a degree in graphic design and after I finished that, um, I had this enormous urge just to break free from, you know, uh, strict guidelines and um, the design mind. I really craved the freedom just to express myself. So I got myself a studio and that's how my um, art journey actually started uh, more seriously. 2005 I moved to Australia. I, my art career has certainly developed a lot since then. I, it wasn't but within the first few weeks or months that I actually started uh, painting here and exhibiting and selling my work. In amongst all that, in the last 15 years, I've also completed a degree in applied social science, which 
obviously is part of my interest is in human psychology and that keeps, keeps actually impacting and influencing my work. I'm naturally somebody who reflects a lot um, about who we are and our human behaviour and how we interact with each other in the world. So I read a lot of books and that combined with my interest in nature um, yeah, it's developing more and more as my um, two, you could say, um, influences for my work. One of the things that's really beautiful about living here on the south coast is um, I go for morning walks every morning and I absolutely love the surroundings that we're in here in Jeringal. I love the green on hills, I love the streets, the beach, the fallen leaves and my morning walks have actually become quite an important part of my practice. I often take photos on my morning walks. They, the photos are for me a little bit, it's almost like sketching um, and it's not that I use those photos and, and necessarily look a lot at them in my creative process. I never, I never actually really go, wow, I really want to paint this, but I think they're just little moments in time and they sort of manifest themselves in different forms of expression when I'm in the studio. And it can be colours, it can be shapes, lines. I'm just, I'm just so fascinated. I, I don't know how anybody can think that's boring to walk. <laughs> I just find it so fascinating. There's art everywhere you look. I mean, look at the cracks in the pavement on your walks, look at all the beautiful lines when um, paint is peeling off a wall, or look at the beautiful colours in a rusty surface. I mean, it's just everywhere. I mean, what's not love to love about the South Coast in Jericho <laughs> and our beautiful nature in Australia? This is my gorgeous little lounge, which obviously is not as gorgeous, but I don't care because it's really important to me. I sit here a lot. I sit here and contemplate, I sit and look at the work in progress, I read, I might look through some of the books by artists that I admire. I've really always been fascinated with the whole abstract expressionist movement, and uh, one in particular is Cy Twombly. And I just love his very spontaneous and uh, sort of raw mark making. Um, I also really love the more abstract landscape painters, um, such as our own Elizabeth Cummings, is a great inspiration for me. I love painting big paintings. I feel an enormous freedom and joy in getting in there and doing big brush strokes and yeah, I mean I paint all sizes but I've got to say big is, is really um, exciting. So I never actually start on a blank canvas. I prefer to work on a canvas that already has a story started on it. So what I do is at the end of the day, uh, when I finish in the studio, I will take whatever leftover paint is on my palette and I will put that on any blank canvases I have sitting around. So when I eventually get to the point where I incorporate that into my body of work that I'm working on, it actually already has a story on it. So there's a layer, just the first layer and there's lots of layers to come but it just means there's no initial decision making in oh you know I want that colour here or that colour there it's just part of the, the process of how that unfolds and um, yeah I find that works really best for me again it's back to that freedom that letting go and letting that creative force just um, run through me. Creating a body of work is quite a lengthy process. It usually takes me a couple of months to uh, actually explore and experiment and do, you know, colour explorations and read and write. And then at some point I can see something 
take form. So rather than me deciding beforehand I want to do any body of work and this is what it's going to be about, it actually takes a couple of months of preparation on, on and, and exploration and experimenting before I know what's going on. Because I paint from the inside out, I don't go out in the landscape, for example, and, and paint something or paint from a, um, you know, a still light composition. So yeah, it can, it's a, a quite a lengthy process. So once I've explored and experimented for a couple of months, I might see a, a common theme and in the work. And then I start to bring things together and, and it starts to, to form an actual body of work. I also run workshops in abstract painting, but one of my most popular one is the one that's called Get Out of Your Mind and Into Your Art. And it's really based on the idea that we all have a unique visual language. And rather than me teaching anyone what I do, I facilitate a workshop to tap into um, each participant's own unique visual language. And I think that's the important part for me in running workshops is that I can be a facilitator of everyone connecting to their uniqueness. So often when I have an exhibition, people will ask me, what's your favourite piece? And I say to them, well, actually my favourite pieces are the ones that are hanging here because that's only a fraction of what I actually create. It's over, only ever my favourite works that make it out in, into the world. <laughs>